Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, The Lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we'll take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Get here? Yeah, right over there. I put them up front. How many in the line? Quite a few. 38. Well, see you later. Right. Oh, Mr. Sweeney? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Any word about the girl yet? No, not yet. I'm hoping you can identify the man you saw pick her up. Well, it sure isn't going to be easy. Like I told you, I didn't get a really good look at his face, just the car and the coat he was wearing. Mm-hmm. Well, there's just a chance you might recognize him. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All right, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. That's right, keep it moving. All right, now turn and face front. Hands at your sides. Look straight ahead, out through the screen there, and keep your heads up. Now, when I call your number, step out and talk up so everyone out there can hear you. Okay, number one, George Phillips, Grand Theft Auto. Where do you live, George? 8876 North National Boulevard. Talk up, George. 8876 North National. What do you do? What's your business? I don't do anything. I'm out of work. When was the last time you worked? Last time? I guess about a year ago. Something like that. About a year. What did you do then? Radio repair man. Repaired radios. Who'd you work for? I, uh... I don't remember the name exactly. Adams, I think. Adams was the name of the guy who owned the shop. Name of the place, too. How long did you work there? I don't know. A couple of months, I guess. I didn't get along with Adams. We had a lot of arguments. Were you with anybody when you were arrested? No. Have any weapons? Weapons? No. This is the first time I've been arrested. It's not what it reads here. Well, this is the first time. Oh, the uh, time I got in that trouble with Adams. Arrested in 1951 for assault. Yeah, I, uh, I threw a radio at him. Hit him. What kind of a car were you driving when you were picked up? Ford. That's not the man. I don't What's think so. What's here for It's a hard to oh, tell. An old one. 38, 39, I guess. What color? Black, I think. Black or dark blue. You remember driving it by 6th and Lincoln at any time? 6th and Lincoln? I, I don't think so. I don't remember. I was just trying to get out of town. Did you pick anybody up? No, I wasn't stopping for anyone. I mean, unless it was the cops, the, the police. And it was. Okay, George, step back. Sure. Number two, Arthur Handy, Grand Theft Auto. Where do you live, Arthur? Over on Shelton, 5577 North Shelton. You arrested with anybody? No, I was alone. What kind of a car was it? 
Chevy, uh, 1940. It's dark blue. You drive by Lincoln and Sixth at any time? No. I was on the other side of town where, where he picked me up. How old are you, Arthur? 19. You live with your family? My uncle. Ever been arrested before? No. I don't think he's the you one. You know anybody from City College? Mm -hmm. A couple of guys. Uh, I don't know many people. I'm from the other side of town. Okay, step back, Arthur. It's going to be awfully hard to identify him. Okay, number know, three, but, uh, William just Bourne, keep robbery. How many more? Step out, William. Quite a few. Keep your head up. Where do you live, William? Hi, Pete. No identifications? No. I couldn't really expect him to identify anyone. He saw him at a distance. Got an overcoat on. Best lead is a car. Did he ever look at the cars we're holding? Yeah. Says the old Ford looks like it, but he can't be sure. Yeah, it's been three days. Should get something in the girl soon. Her family's been checking in every five minutes. I don't know. Talked to everyone who knew her. It just doesn't sound like the type who would let a stranger pick her up. You know what we'll find out? What? we we'll find out she eloped or something stupid like that. Well, that's one of the first things I thought about. Who's going to elope with her? How do I know? Well, we've checked everyone she knows. Maybe she met some guy she didn't tell anyone about. If our witness hadn't seen her get into that car, this could be just another case for missing persons. All right, let's take a look at it. I've taken a look at it. And have you been getting enough sleep? Sorry. Okay. Mary Jane Cummings goes to a show three days ago. The 15th. Right. John Enright, front of the family, spots her getting into the car. Old car. Yeah, probably anywhere from 37 to 44. Dark, black, green, or blue. Next morning, the family reports a girl missing, and John Enright comes in and describes the man he saw in the car. Medium build, wearing glasses and a tan top coat. Never seen him before. Now she's been missing three days, and that's what we got to go on. With that much information, we could wrap it up in the next five minutes. Well... Yeah, fine. Just got a call from a guy in a gas station. He was with this girl on Lakeview Road. They got out of the car to take a look at the lake and found a body. Huh? Mary Jane Cummings? I don't know. It's a girl. He was too excited to give me much. Lakeview Road, eh? Yeah, he said he thought the girl had been shot to death. It's okay, Pete. You the police? Yeah. Over here. She's down by the lake. That way. Okay, show us. Okay. My girl and I were parked up there and took a walk. Where's your girl? Oh, she's up in the car. She's she's scared. Now, who are you? I'm Atwell, Stan Atwell. My girl's name is Nancy Holloway. It, it, it's right over there. I, I mean, she is. The body. Right there. You see? Uh, give me a light, thing. Uh-huh. We just stumbled on her. Nancy ran back to the car, and I took a good look. She looks like she, she'd been shot. Yeah, she has. You ever seen anybody shot before? Yeah. Where? In the service. It's not like this, though. Out, out here, you don't expect to find something like that. Yeah. Somebody's coming. Oh, it's quiet in the lab, boys. Uh, Pete, take him back to his car and talk to his girl. Right. Circle around that way so you don't mess up the ground up. Yeah, let's go, Sam. Okay. How long ago did you find him? Oh, I guess about... Sam, Pete? Uh, down here. Uh, go around that way. Uh, I got Doc and the lab boys with me. Hello, Ben. Oh, Doc. Gunshot. Looks like small caliber. Uh, can we have some more light? Yeah, here. Uh, the rest of you start backtracking. See what you can find. Take your time. Cummings, girl? Yeah. Gunshot, all right. Small caliber. 22 or 25. Been shot twice. Twice? A head and chest. Oh, I didn't see the chest. Not much blood. No. Carried here. Shot at close range. Powder burns. Klein, stake out this area. I don't want anybody in that doesn't belong. Right. Uh, Ben. Yeah, what? So what about a family? I'll go tell him. Fred 
Gary, Lieutenant. Oh, come in, Mr. Gary. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Hello. I have a seat. Thanks. Now, you just go ahead and tell me all about it, Mr. Gary. What I told the other officer? Yeah, please. Well, uh, I was... Well, first I read the papers, and I started thinking about the other night when I was out near the lake. Uh, what night was that? Uh, Thursday. The 15th? Four days. Yeah, yeah, the 15th. Uh, go ahead. Well, that night I was parked out by the lake right at the turnoff. You know, the road before it circles around the lake to the right? Yeah. Well, I was parked there with my girl. <clears throat> uh, I saw a car drive past. It was old Ford. Sedan? Yes. Go on. Well, I, I read the papers, and I remember the car, and the paper said the girl was picked up by a man driving an old Ford, and she was found by the lake, and the car was driving up in that direction. Uh, did you notice the driver of the car? It was a man, and there was a girl with him. Uh, what color was the car? Dark. Black, maybe. <clears throat> You've got a pretty good memory. Well, I, I thought at first it might be the cops, uh, the police. You got the license number? No, I told the other officer I just noticed the first couple of numbers. I, I don't know why I remembered them. I'm not sure of them either, but I think they were 8R. 8R. Uh, did you notice anything about the driver of the car? Well, I couldn't see him very well. I think maybe he was wearing a heavy coat, though, because it looked like he had the collar turned up, and it didn't look just like the collar of an ordinary coat. Uh -huh. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Just what I told the other officer. Okay, Mr. Gary. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, will you want me again? Well, we may. We'll give you a call. Okay. So long. Ben. Yeah? An old tramp outside. He's got quite a tail. Oh, what is it? He saw a guy throw away a gun this morning. Better talk to him. Sure. Hey, come on in, Phil. This is Lieutenant Guthrie, Phil. Oh, yeah. How are you? Hello, Phil. Tell the lieutenant what you told me. Why, sure. It was, I was flopping under a bridge. The one out on Oakdale. Uh, want me to tell him? Sorry. Oh, that's, but I was flopping under a bridge, the one out on Oakdale. Uh, one of you fellas got a smoke? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Light. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you. Ah, oh, well. Now, I don't much like long, drawn-out yarns, but I was flopping there, you see, under the bridge. The one out on Oakdale, and I was sleeping. Well, I hear a car stop on the road, so I get up, and I seen this fellow getting out of the car. Oh, my. Well, yeah, he walks down to the river and throws a gun out in it, and then he climbs back up and he gets into his car. Uh, um, that's all. Now, what did the man look like? Well, he was a short fellow. He was maybe about my size. And what was he wearing? Clothes. What kind of a car was he driving? Well, I couldn't see the car. He parked over me on the bridge, and it... You get the gun? No, 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 I can't swim. I read the paper. Well, come on, go it. Yeah, uh, where he threw the gun? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm a little hungry. I'll buy you lunch. I need breakfast. I'll buy that, too. report on the gun? I got six men out checking. It's a new one. I think we'll locate the cellar. Hello, lad. Ben? Pete? Hi. I don't know how much good I can do you. That uh, ejected shell they found on the road has been mashed too flat to get any markings. Mm -hmm. Gun's the same caliber, all right, but I need the slug to compare with the riflings. Both slugs pass through. Well, this is what I've got. The girl had been dead for about three days. I guess she was shot on the road and either staggered or was carried to the spot where you found her. A wound in the head. Could she have staggered? I don't think so. Neither does Doc. Not that far, anyway, so your best bet is to figure she was carried. Just on a hunch, Doc checked the blood smear on her leg. It's not her blood type. Here's the lab report. Mm. Type H. Yeah, it's rare. Now, uh, here are the samplings we took from her person and clothes. A lot of stuff is from the area, and then there are some other things. We went through her house and eliminated some, but there are a couple of items we can't account for. Might be stuff off the seats of the car. Might not. You know about these things. If we can match them, fine, but she could have picked them up anywhere. You think that gun could have done it? Yeah, so does Doc. I fired a couple of rounds in the box, and if you can locate the slugs that killed her... Did you see where she was found? No, but I just said that if you can find well, that's them... That's all open country. Like looking for a needle in a haystack. 
Well, if you could locate the other ejected shell, maybe it's intact. I could get the ejector markings. Well, I've still got men out there. We're trying to find it. Uh, we made some casts of prints and tire tracks. None of them were too good. That road was traveled since she was killed. Well, if we can find the guy who picked her up and he's got type H blood, hmm, we've got a pretty good case. Got it, Van. Why? Asher and I located the store where the gun was purchased. Clerk sold it to a man eight days ago. Who was the man? Name's Waller Holt. Lives at 9932 South Jefferson. Let's go talk to him. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good any time. And the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. Somebody's coming. Yes? Is Mr. Holt in? No, he's at work. Uh, well, just a minute. Yes, I've got dinner on the stove. Uh, we're the police. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Cargan. Oh. Well, what are We'd you... like to talk to Mr. Holt. Well, I'm his wife. What do you want with him? Uh, can we come in, please? Well, the place is a mess. All right. What's he done? We just want to talk to him. He's at work. What time is it? Uh... Five after six. He should be home in a few minutes. Look, I'm cooking. Do you mind? Well, no, no. You go right ahead. Uh, we'll come along and ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. All right. Is this serious? Maybe not. Where was your husband the night of the 15th? On the 15th? Thursday. Thursday? Why? Well, we'd like to know. It's important. Well, that's a number of days ago. I'm trying to remember. Why? Yeah, I think he was home Thursday night. He usually doesn't go out on Thursday night. He was out on Wednesday, bowling with some of the men from his office. Look, all these questions, what did he do? You might as well tell me. He'll be home any minute. Well, we're not sure he did anything. We're just checking. Your husband purchased a twenty-two automatic eight days ago. A gun? Do you know anything about it? A gun? Well, he didn't say anything about it. But if he bought one, there certainly must have been a good reason. A twenty-two. that's not a very big gun, is it? No. Well, maybe it's the gophers. We've been having trouble with gophers digging up the backyard. We just planted new grass. I think something's going to boil over there. Oh, thank you. It smells good. He probably just bought the gun to kill those gophers. What kind of a car does he drive? Please, can't you tell me what this is all about? All about the guns and cars Just and... some questions. But you must suspect him of something. He threw the gun away this morning. He threw it in the Oakdale River. He threw it... What do you think he's done? You think he's robbed somebody or something? Because if you do, that's just plain stupid. My husband wouldn't do a thing like that. What do you think he's done? Mrs. Holt, I've tried to explain. We're just checking. Checking what? You must suspect him of something. What are you checking on? What kind of a car does your husband drive, Mrs. Holt? A Pontiac. What year? A new one. We just got it yesterday. Lillian? In the kitchen. That darn paper is leaning in. Won't you again. please tell me what this is all about? What? I was just talking to... Uh, oh. These are police officers, dear. Uh, police? I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, and this is Sergeant Cargan. Howdy. Hello. Is, uh, is something wrong? They want to talk to you. They won't tell me. Well, what is it? Uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay. Uh, you go on and finish dinner, dear. We'll go in the other room. Well, all right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Holmes. Now, uh, 
What's this all about? Now, wait till we get in the other room. Sure. Is this serious? It makes me a little nervous. Come home and find a couple of cops in my kitchen. Um, just sit down anywhere. Thank you. Now, what is all this? Mr. Holt, you own a twenty-two cold automatic? Well, I did, but it was stolen. When was it stolen? Oh, a couple of days ago. Did you report the theft? Uh, no, I, I didn't think it was that important. Your wife know about it? No, I, I didn't tell her. I, I didn't even tell her I'd bought the gun. Why not? Well, I thought it might worry her. She doesn't like guns. Anything else stolen? No. You mean somebody broke into your house and only took a gun? The gun was in the car, in the glove compartment. Oh. You have a Pontiac, is that right? Yes, that's right. A new one? Yes. Mr. Holt, where were you last Thursday night? Thursday? Thursday. Why, I, I was at home. I, I think if... Let me think. I, I, I was at home most of the evening, if I remember correctly. Did you go out at all? Thursday. Well, I'm not sure, but I, I think I did go out for a while. I think I went down to the bowling alley to see what I was doing. How long were you gone? Oh, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Look, what is all this? Do you think I've done something? You just want a few facts. A man was observed throwing a twenty-two pistol in the Oakdale Lake early this morning. Well, did you catch him? No. You didn't throw that gun away, did you, Mr. Holt? Me? I, of course not. I, I told you it was stolen. You wear glasses all the time, Mr. Holt? Yes, most of the time. Why? I... Look, I think you should tell me. You know a Mary Jane Cummings? No. When did you get your new car, Mr. Holt? Um... Four or five days ago. Your wife told us you got it yesterday. Well, you got me so nervous. What I... kind of a car did you own before you got the new one? A Ford. Mm-hmm. How old, Mr. Holt? What was the year? What color was it? It was a, a 39. It was black. Where'd you sell it? A place over on Lincoln, a regular dealer. Now, now, look, I'd like to know what this is all about. All right, Mr. Holt. I'm surprised you haven't read about it. It's been in all the papers. What? Mary Jane Cummings. Uh, oh, the girl who was killed oh, no oh no you you don't think i had anything to do with it we're just checking you say the gun was stolen when a couple of days ago two days ago that's right out of the new car yeah your wife says you only got the new car yesterday i think you better come along with us Blood on the seat, all right. Well, that just about does it. Uh, where's Holt? Pete's with him. He sticks to his story about going to the bowling alley. You want me to check and see if anybody remembers his being in on Thursday night? Yeah. Uh, but before you do, uh, see if you can find out Holt's blood type. Ask his wife. Uh, find out who his doctor is and ask him. Holt says he doesn't know. Okay. And uh, get our witnesses in. I want to see if they can identify him. Right. See you later. All right. I tell you, I sold it because we needed a new one. Oh, hello, Ben. You guys have been asking me questions now for three hours. I'm, I'm tired. I, I, hey, I Mr. Want... Holt, our lab found blood stains on the seat of your old car. They must have been there when I bought the car. Weren't that old. Only about a week. Well, I don't know how they got there. Mr. Holt, we've got a couple of witnesses that saw the man who picked up Mary Jane Cummings. We've also got a witness that saw the man who threw your gun in the lake. You were at home and you went to the bowling alley for about an hour, is that right? Yes. You didn't drive out to Lakeview Road? No. You don't know any Mary Jane Cummings? I told you no. No, I did not know her. Have you cut yourself in the last week, Mr. Holt? Cut myself? No. Why? Take him down and have him examined, Pete. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I, I, I cut my knee, but I, I, I forgot it. Mm, let's see. I, I hit it on a nail in the garage. Hmm, bad cut. It doesn't bother me. I forgot all about it. We found a blood smear on the dead girl. It wasn't her blood. I hurt my knee in the garage. Okay, Mr. Holt. Take him back, Pete. All right, let's go. Wait a minute. Yes, Mr. Holt? What's the use? I killed her. Want to tell us about it? I met her about three months ago. We didn't tell anybody. Naturally, my wife... We met in out-of-the-way places, usually Wednesday nights. 
my bowling night. I think I'd better sit down again. Thanks. Cigarette? No. Yeah, there's not much to it. Boy, this is going to be tough on Lil. I, I guess maybe I'd have told you sooner if it hadn't been for Lil. Nice girl. Been married quite a while. I, I feel better, though. Tell us all about it. Well, there's not much. I picked her up and we drove out on that road. We hadn't been getting along, fighting a lot. She, she was sure a funny girl. Pretty, the wildest temper in the whole world, and I get pretty hot myself, too. Uh, Lil's left me a couple of times. Mary was going to tell her. You know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to explain how much I hated her, but I, I, I couldn't stay away. It doesn't make sense now. It stopped making sense when I shot her and I knew she was dead. It was like a bad dream. I didn't buy the gun to kill her. We we had some gophers. And... <laughs> I talk about killing gophers when I killed a girl. We sat there in the car and she hit me. I don't know what I did. I, I, I went wild, I guess. I, I don't remember it too well. I just grabbed the gun. She laughed her stupid head off, and I shot her. I just wanted to stop her laughing. I, I can't tell you anymore. It's too hard. It's all mixed up. I don't think I can live with it. I hope they kill me. We'll need a statement. Everything you've told us for the stenographer. You'll have to sign it, Mr. Holmes. Yeah. Okay, but not now. I I haven't slept since it happened. Can I talk to you, Ben? Sure, it's okay. Take him up, Pete. Right. Come on, Mr. Holden. I found his doctor and got his blood type. It's all all right. Mm -hmm. He's already confessed. Oh? I sure doesn't look worried about it. He's not now. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Parley Bear, Clayton Post, Bob Sweeney, Peter Leeds, Howard McNear, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> 